Now, a study is underway to search for an alternative source of clean energy in Singapore, geothermal power. It will focus on the northern and eastern regions, which have higher surface temperatures and are identified to have potential. The Energy Market Authority and Nanyang Technological University will look at ways to harness heat from hot rocks found underground and convert into power. Uh, one potential spot is the Sembawang Hot Springs. Preliminary findings are expected by the end of next year. And if results are positive, further research will look at the feasibility of scaling up geothermal systems in Singapore. And this will support efforts to reduce emissions from its power sector and improve energy resilience by diversifying sources. Advancements in technologies coupled with the declining costs have enabled policymakers and industry leaders to significantly advance the role of renewables. Singapore is keen to accelerate the development and the deployment of emerging low-carbon alternatives. Well, for more insights, we're joined by Associate Professor Alessandro Romanoli from the NTU School of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering. Uh, well, Prof, what exactly can a geothermal energy be used for that will benefit the layperson or industries? Hi, good evening. Um, in very simple terms, uh, geothermal can be utilized for a number of applications such as uh, heating, cooling, agriculture, aqua farming, and then also for electricity power generation. The good thing is, is that the geothermal is green energy and it also lasts for a very long time. And you know, why, why were the northern and eastern parts of Singapore identified for this study? And which towns exactly? How big an area are we talking about? So first, let me say that uh, the project I'm working on intends to offer a preliminary understanding of the geothermal potential for Singapore, and indeed is the first of its kind. And in terms of areas that we'll be focusing on, we are looking at the Sembawang uh, hot spring area, and uh, our simulation model that we intend to develop, we will extend it to, to a surface area of about 100 kilometers square. And based on what you've seen so far... Thank you. Yeah, what, what is the geothermal potential on our island? For instance, uh, how many flats can it supply electricity to? Okay, pardon, before I meant uh, 10 kilometers square would be the extent of the size of the computer modeling that we'll be doing. And for what it concerns, the, um, um, the, the amount of energy available for uh, geothermal, it is hard to say at this point in time, but we, what we do hope and we do believe uh, is that uh, geothermal will enable C Singapore uh, to reduce its reliance on imported fossil fuel uh, to cover, for instance, the base load power uh, demand and to serve as a strategic uh, energy uh, reserve. In terms of households, uh, again, it's hard to say, but we could uh, sort of estimate that this could potentially cover hundreds of thousands of households. And uh, what, what are some of hints, you know, that will show there is a ge geothermal energy source beneath? Okay, so the first, te first step is that to uh, identify the potential geothermal resource through the occurrence of surface features. This could be, for instance, volcanoes, uh, mud pool, uh, geyser, or for instance, uh, hot springs. Indeed, the presence of hot springs uh, in Singapore and the anomalies in the heat flow are a good indication of this geothermal resource. Then we need to build the computer models, relying on the geochemical uh, analysis uh, on uh, ge geological and geophysical uh, data. The first step is that of validating uh, this model, uh, for instance, by the means of uh, drilling additional boreholes to measure underground temperatures. And then measurements coupled with computer models will enable us to develop underground temperature distribution maps that will uh, allow us to understand the extent and the amount of the heat source available. And, you know, what, what factors will you be looking at when you decide whether a particular geothermal source can be tapped on? Okay, so there are two key factors that we need to consider. The first one is the depth of the target temperature. And second is whether or not we can extract the amount of heat that we need fast enough for a meaningful utilization. And the good thing is, is that uh, we are uh, aware of uh, uh, new emerging technologies led by industry that seem to allow for a less invasive, more cost-effective and more efficient heat energy extraction than conventional solutions. Well, thanks for that. Associate Professor Alessandro Romanoli from the NTU School of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering.